Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another FIFA 22 video where today we're going to be checking out the 4-2-3-1 wide. Now, I actually really like this formation. If anything, I probably would say I prefer this version of the 4-2-3-1 than the narrow version of the 4-2-3-1. I think this formation is a little bit better because I think width in this game is really, really important. Certainly for the way I like to play. If you're someone that likes to play with a bit more width and you feel like you need a bit more width in your team, this is probably the better version to go with. However, you do need to remember that it is maybe going to be slightly less effective for those people that want to play the tiki tacker quick style of play. It won't be as effective because obviously the left and right mids won't be available to potentially score goals because they're going to be... Uh, out wide and their starting position is naturally a little bit deeper so you may find this formation may potentially be a little bit less effective in terms of attacking but if you're someone who is potentially struggling with conceding goals and you just need something that's maybe a little bit more solid that will suit you this is probably i would say the better version of the 4-2-3-1 to go with so this is potentially could be seen as the more defensive option this is maybe for those people who do struggle with chances and struggling with conceding too many goals now, with that being said, these are the tactics. Now, for that reason, I haven't gone for anything too crazy with the tactics. Generally, I would say this is a great formation that you can potentially press in. The reason why I would object to using a press in this formation is because, as we pointed out with those left and right mids, the starting formation is generally a little bit more reserved and it is a little bit more negative because the left and right mids are a little bit deeper than the left and right cams that you would if you was in the narrower version of the 4-2-3-1. So playing with a press isn't going to be as effective because the starting positions are deeper. So they have to get further up the pitch before they press. So the press isn't as effective because they have to come from further away. Hence why I wouldn't recommend using a press. It won't be very effective in this formation. With that being said, you still need to play on a relatively high depth. I'd recommend playing on something like 60 to 65. I th I'd say is a very good number. Because whilst you are going to have naturally, you know, deeper starting positions, you need to combat that by getting a little bit higher at the pitch. So that is potentially going to obviously mean that there's a bit more space in behind for your opponents. Anyone who does like to lob the ball over the top may get some success against you. But this is kind of very necessary to kind of, if you play on sort of like 50 depth, this formation is going to be way too defensive and you'll never ever be able to really score any goals. So you do need to kind of combat that by going for around about 65 on the depth, just to make sure you do have some offensive prowess in this formation. With that being said as well, I've gone for fast build-up to really ensure that you do create some chances. Now, this isn't the best formation to potentially use fast build-up in, but the reason why I do like it is because you have the option of the left and right midfielders. And I think formations that have the option of left and right wingers make it a lot more easy to attack because... Play, like in formations like the 4 2 3 narrow where it's a little bit narrower you have to go through the middle and it's going to be a bit more effective to get to the final third because your players are a lot close together so that kind of fast build up does work a bit more effective in that formation but when you get to the final third you don't have as many options at least you have the options in this formation to play the ball out wide to potentially go down the wing potentially cross it look for cutbacks you know and just it makes it a little bit more difficult for your opponent to defend whereas in narrow formations Fast build may maybe a bit more effective, but it's a little bit more difficult to actually create the clear-cut chances that you need. With that being said as well, I decided to go for possession with the chance creation because this means that when we do get to the final third, our players, rather than going on direct passing and everybody running in behind and making runs and then you've got no one to pass the ball to if you don't play the correct through ball, possession just allows us then to get to the final third quickly and then sort of set up shop and, and really wait for the opportunities. Now, this may be a little bit, you know, difficult because AI defending is quite, you know, effective in this game. So obviously playing on possession can obviously lead to your opponent getting a lot of AI blocks. Now, especially when we get to team of the season, this might be not as effective because obviously the players and the, the defenders that you'll come up against are just going to be super overpowered and have such high uh, defending stats that their blocking is going to be super, super effective. So this is something that works for now and definitely something that will probably need changing more towards team of the season. But I like using the possession because it really gives me the control of the game. And if you have the patience to just play the ball around and wait for your opponent to get frustrated, drag a player out of position, and then you boom, you've got to really act quickly and act on that space and exploit that space. And then you can definitely create many chances with this formation. 
Offensive width as well, we've gone for around about 65. I didn't want to go anything too narrow. Didn't want to go too wide because the left and right mids generally is very hard to get them involved in the attacking game. So you really kind of just need the width to be there just more as a decoy and a distraction just so it's not so obvious that you're going to pass the ball inside all the time or forwards to your cam. You at least have the options go out to the wing, to the left, to the right, to the left and the right back, whoever it may be. So you do need a little bit of width in the team. In terms of the instructions, now, of course, central striker, generally, most people are going to have super fast players. So, obviously, the typical stay central and getting behind is going to be needed in this formation, especially. I don't recommend in this formation using, for example, stay forward. Uh, stay forward generally is a lot more effective if you are using a press. In this formation, of course, we're not going to be using a press. So, I wouldn't recommend using stay forward there. In terms of your central cam, Typical stuff, again, you want him to be on get into the box and free roam. And again, if he was using a press, you would potentially have your cam on stay forward. You really need this, the cam and the striker to have the same sort of instructions. You wouldn't want the striker on stay forward, but the cam not, because then there's going to be no link up. He's got no one to work off. So in this formation, because we're not using the press, we don't need the stay forward option there. In terms of the wide players, this is where it's really, really important. The wide players that we've got, both of them on free roam, both on getting behind and getting to the box for cross. The getting behind, pretty self-explanatory because when we're using the fast build-up, we do need them getting forwards, getting up the pitch and getting involved in the attacking play. Of course, we want them getting into the box when they can. So, of course, when we're on possession, we get to the final third. If we're dominating the game, we need more bodies getting in the box because we don't need them staying out wide. We need them getting in the box, supporting Bellingham, supporting Lewandowski, you striker, you cam to potentially score more goals. And the free roam is super important because whilst their natural position is a little bit deeper, when we do get into that possession area, and obviously when we're getting into the final third we're in, on possession, we do need those guys to be drifting around and creating space. Again, I don't want them stuck out there on the wing. There's, they're not going to do anything because then you're just going to be relying on your striker and your cam. And especially with AI blocking being quite overpowered, you need more bodies, you need more options. So we do need these guys on free roam. And this is one of, and probably the only way that I would recommend you can get these players involved in the attacking game. With that being said as well, the defensive midfielders, you can do, you can use these in a couple of ways. Now we're using them on the typical cut passing lane, stay back while attacking cover center in this example. If you are using the fast build up, there's no point having the stay back while attacking on because these DMs go forwards anyway. So you may as well have them on balance. They're going to have a slightly better starting position, a slightly more offensive starting position. So it's going to lead to a little bit more ease when it comes to attacking up the pitch. In terms of defending, it might leave a little bit of space in between the gap between your center backs and the dm so if anybody's playing with central cams they may have a little bit more space than normal if you are someone who doesn't want to play in the fast build-up maybe you want to play on long ball and you want to just rely on your cam and your striker to do all your running in behind then you can use these guys on stay back while attacking but in this formation because we're using the fast build-up i'm just going to change these two dms to balanced attack and they're going to have slightly better starting position start start better opposition and better, better opportunities to get forwards and help with the front guys attacking. In terms of the fullbacks, of course, in this formation, they don't get involved at all. You need that solid foundation. These guys want to be on stay back while attacking. Make sure that they don't go forwards too much. Of course, we've got some very good players ourselves. We've got Cancelo's team of the year, Diaz team of the year, obviously that foot birthday, Sergio Ramos, which a lot of people thought was super, uh, super expensive. I decided to do it and it was an amazing decision. He is absolutely amazing. He's a prime example of someone who just makes a crazy amount of blocks. So if you have them in the right position, they'll just do a lot of the defending for you. Unfortunately, it's just the way this game is. But all of your, your defenders want to be on stay back while attacking. And then Van der Sar, the goalkeeper, of course, that comes crosses and sweep kid, which is the standard stuff for all of our keepers. Now that is it for the 4-2-3-1 wide. I do like this formation. I think it is... A better for me in the way I like to play. I think it's better than the the narrow four two three one. I think it suits my style of play a little bit better. But I do think this is a very effective formation. It is going to need tweaking a little bit as we get close to team of the season. We're going to need to tweak a few things with a lot of our formations because once we get slightly more overpowered players, that really opens up the tactic building a little bit more when it comes to that stage of the year. But if you do like this formation, make sure you try it out. Let me know how it goes through in the comment section down below. Make sure you drop a thumbs up and subscribe as well if you are new to the channel. But that is all today, guys. Have an awesome day. I'm out.